Think of a time or a moment in your life where you wish that something or someone were close by. There's a certain feeling that we get longing for distant loved ones, whether living in a different state or when traveling the world. Geography breeds diversity, but can also introduce challenges in personal life as well as in business. Language is what connects us. The language of business and technology lies within the standards. So what are our intentions? We aim to solve this problem using augmented reality technology. And today we will be discussing the globalization aspects and standards of augmented reality usage in the petroleum field. The oil and gas industry is very much the lifeblood of global industry, but this technology extends far beyond this. So what is the global relevance of augmented reality technology? Going into the 21st century, we're beginning to see the limits placed on global trade by tariffs and sanctions. These are a result of geopolitical tensions, but have the tendency to exacerbate these as well. Augmented reality is a tool which can help bring us all together where every country can profit. Within today's competitive world, being able to market a product remotely using augmented reality technology provides a marketing tool to our clients which will set them apart from others. And this product doesn't need to be limited to the United States, North America, or even the New World. This is where trade or organizations come into play. The World Trade Organization, which is a global organization consisting of over 120 countries, is one of these forces that can aid in the promotion of cross-border exchanges and transactions. The world at large with current events tells us that the borders are fortifying themselves, so it is our aim to bring the world closer together with technology, transparency, and understanding. So, how do standards help bridge this gap? A universal language which helps bridge technological gaps exists within the world. As a recent example, we, we see that widespread adoption of USB-C standard allows people to quick charge anywhere on the globe. The Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers, the International Organization for Standardization, and the National Institute of Standards and Technology all dedicate themselves to promoting safety and advancing humanity through establishment and maintenance of standards. What better metric for global progress than the development of standards? So, a historical example would be that before industrialization, something as arbitrary as a nut and bolt produced in dif different factories within the same town would not fit each other. It is, st it is the standards that are created as well as the globalized tools we use for tapping into the world market which will lead humanity success, where every person who owns stake in this world is guaranteed a future filled with the right to an education, a claim to good life, and the infinite freedom of possibilities. Good afternoon, my name is Brian Torres and today I'll be speaking on the feasibility and the risk analysis of our augmented reality test bench proposal. So a quick overview, for feasibility analysis, we took into consideration a couple of aspects. Uh, technical, for example, resources, economic, legal, operations, and schedule to measure the feasibility of our project. For risk analysis, we showcased a fall tree where, where we map certain harmful events we could foresee, and we give a, a certain categories depending on the severity. On the feasibility analysis, each aspect has its own table, like this one. On the attribute side, we ask a question uh, that we considered relevant, important for, for the, accomplish the accomplishment of our project. We have a score of one to five, one being the lowest, five being us being certain that we can overcome any, any harm, if there is any at all. Uh, on the why, we say why those uh, events might be harmful and the solution to each one of them. A second table that we present is where we measure each attributes against each other, right? And here we gave a score of equal importance of one, and then the highest being extremely important on seven, meaning which of, which of these attributes we consider the most important in our team, right? We calculated the geometric mean and the weights, and we calculated the total. On the next table, we, we use those weights and the, the weight scores and we added the scores and we calculated the weighted average of everything. In our case being 4.60, anything above three means that our project or proposal is, has a higher likelihood of succeeding. Now for risk analysis, we, we showcase, like I said, the fall tree and we, we uh, list a couple of harmful 
events that we could foresee on each one of these attributes, right? We also presented a risk exposure matrix where we, uh, we measure the likelihood of occurrence and we classify it depending, you know, by colors. We have the legend here, uh, red being cat catastrophic and green being the lowest uh, likelihood of occurrence. And we also present appropriate actions we could take to resolve these issues, right? How to mitigate these risks that we could foresee in our project. Now, a quick review, the feasibility analysis. We calculate the overall feasibility and we, we calculate the geometric uh, mean and the weighted score of everything. And on risk analysis, we categorize by risks and we, we gave actions to mitigate these risks. Thank you. Having a comprehensive and cohesive plan of action is critical to the successful development of any type of project, especially a project like ours that is on the cutting edge of technology. A comprehensive work breakdown structure allows us to anticipate where we will spend the majority of our time and also to not forget those places that might become trip hazards during the development process. Unexpected, or unsurprisingly that is, hardware integration and software development are where we anticipate spending the majority of our development cycle of this AR test bench augmentation. However, equally important end of product testing and product enhancement, an iterative process at the end of the development cycle to take feedback, to provide polish, to ensure that things work seamlessly. Setting aside time for this is critical to not overrunning deadlines or presenting a rushed final project. Having an inclusive and realistic timeline is equally critical. Beginning with IoT development, getting our data onto a computer so that we can access it and use it in the AR augmentation. After that process has begun, after we have a template for how we're going to do that, we can continue developing that further in tandem with the Vuforia development, which is our AR suite. After our AR suite and our IoT data are developed and synced up together, we'll bring it to the HoloLens, make sure it connects properly. We'll bring the test bench up and make sure that it is seamlessly connected and the data refreshes quickly and remains live during the experience. At the end, we set aside time for testing, that iterative process that I mentioned earlier, to ensure that our project is delivered with the most professional polish that we can put on it. And then ensuring that we have enough time to demonstrate this technology properly is also critical because a great technology may not be appreciated if it is not presented in the proper context. To execute a plan of action, we need the adequate resources. A multidisciplinary team with a budget to support it. Our multidisciplinary personnel is well equipped to meet the challenge ahead. We combine all aspects of our electrical and computer engineering education into this wide range of project. Our budget is perfect for our objectives. We've been provided all we need by our corporate sponsors. Before us, our multidisciplinary team composed of young men studying electrical and computer engineering at Florida International University. Diego Mendoza, team leader with a focus on business. Al Ludman, electrician of six years with a focus on power. Ron Garcia, experience of hardware integration with a focus on hardware and software integration. Brian Torres, experience with full stack web development with a focus on software. Michael Fogel, experience as a mechanic technician with a focus on a technician's perspective. Next up we have our budget. Our budget is small in components, large in dollars. Our hardware component, one HoloLens, $3,745 total. We have five Euphoria software licenses, 
$40,000 total. Total for the project, $43,000. $44,000 almost. In conclusion, our team is well prepared to meet the challenge ahead. We have all the experience necessary, ranging from our work and our education to complete this project, and we have the budget to support us. Hi, my name is Iran Garcia with Team 21, and today I'm presenting the end product description and other deliverables. The end product description describes how the product works and how it's gonna tie up and what the user will, will expect to experience when he tries out the product. The other deliverables are to provide users with other information that is not part of it, but it helps them, such as a video or a manual, things like that. First, the main components. The AR testment is composed of three main components. We have the industrial server, the AR display headset, and the PLC computer. The PLC computer controls the, the SRP PPM test bench, which will send information to the industrial server. The industrial server has 3D model databases and an input of data, merges it all, and sends it through the wireless network to the air display headset. Sensor inputs from the headset will guide the user. It will also find out which model to use and where it is located in 3D space. Let's talk about the AR headset display. The AR headset display is a Microsoft HoloLens headset. We have a camera input which will read the QR code that tells it which device or which object it is looking at. A Tamify depth sensor which will calculate the distance between the AR headset and the SRP PPM test bench. And an inertial measurement unit sensor input. This will allow you to know where you are in 3D space and guide your movements. Next, we're going to talk about the industrial server. The industrial server is the brains of the project. It compiles all the data from the SRP PPM and the AR headset and provides it the proper information and 3D models back to the AR headset. The PLC computer will give it data from the SRP PPM, send it in. It will be running a, a HoloLens SDK and Vuforia instance. We will have a 3D model database with all the possible models that can be included in, in the AR display that will be all merged and sent to the wireless network to the headset display. The input and output from the AR headset will be through of the wireless network. The server will contain a database of all 3D models that can be displayed on the AR headset. Specifications. In this section, we will discuss, we will discuss the specifications of each of the AR augmentation for, uh, for each of the components for the AR augmentation for motor test bench. First, we're going to talk about the Microsoft HoloLens. It has a Qualcomm Snapdragon 850, 4GB of DDR4 RAM, and 64GB of memory storage. It has four visible light cameras, two infrared cameras, one megapixel, time of flight depth sensor, and an inertial measurement unit. It also contains Wi-Fi, 11AC, and Bluetooth 5. The industrial server will contain a Xeon E320 processor for servers, 64 gigab gigabytes of RAM, DDR4, and a 700 watt or 1200 watt PSU. It will also contain PCI Express slots and a two terabyte hard drive. It will also contain in the PCI slots, Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5. Other deliverables. In order to provide users and designers better understanding of the project, additional deliverables are required. The users will be provided with other forms of information to allow them to familiarize themselves with the AR headset. This will allow the users to quickly get up and running with the project. We will create a video demonstration demonstrating the basic setup and usage of the AR augmentation for more test bench. This video presentation will provide a simple quick setup guide for users. We will also be including a user's manual that will be created and will explain in more details how the AR augmentation works and how to set it up and how it is used. It will also include a troubleshooting procedures and common errors that could be encountered. To sum it up, we spoke about the end product description, what we expect for the device to do, and how it's going to all be tied together. The functions of each of the devices, such as the air headset and the industrial server, 
the specifications for both and other little rules such as the video demo presentation and user manual. Thank you.